Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Roma Malik. I'm a senior pre-sales engineer here with ISRI India. Uh, and today we're going to start our presentation on ArcGIS Indoors, uh, mainly how we can work with ArcGIS Indoors and Indoor Positioning System to uh, start uh, creating a 3D digital twin uh, for an indoor space, uh, create a uh, interactive experience for the users uh, that can help with indoor uh, wayfinding and navigation and that how that can be ingested then within different kinds of web applications uh, for planning of operations, asset management, so on and so forth. Uh, so I hope my screen is visible uh, though to begin with, I'll just walk you uh, walk everyone today here with uh, a common workflow that we uh, uh, start with when working with uh, or creating any kind of indoor digital twin um, and creating a more of a floor aware map uh, and space uh, for any of your indoor plans or any of your indoor data set that you might have. Um, so the uh, the workflow kind of works with uh, bringing in your data. Uh, whether it is georeferenced or GIS enriched into the ArcGIS desktop application, that's ArcGIS Pro. Uh, so uh, if the data is georeferenced, that uh, when I'm talking about georeferencing, it has the correct geographical location. Um, we can uh, we can bring it in into the desktop application. If not, there are tools specifically which are targeted towards uh, georeferencing. Uh, that's making sure it has the correct projection system, scaling, uh, rotating, uh, and uh, sizing the indoor plan uh, so that we make sure that it has uh, the correct orientation as well as scale. Uh, and that would be uh, taken into consideration when I'm working with navigation. So my direction as well as distance come in, comes into picture. Uh, so for that, I bring in whether I have uh, 2D CAD plans, AutoCAD plans, 3D Revit data sets or uh, BIM models, uh, or I'm working with simple PDF drawings. I can bring them in into the desktop application. That's ArcGIS Pro. Georeference it, scale it, rotate it, move it. Um, one of the uh, added on advantages while working with ArcGIS is uh, if your current uh, data is in any of the native Autodesk and uh, uh, Autodesk format, uh, ISRI and Autodesk have a handshake. So all of the data which is in any of uh, the native Autodesk format like Revit, uh, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, InfraWorks can be brought in directly by simply dragging and dropping it into ArcGIS Pro, the desktop application that we have. Uh, so there is data interoperability and the loss of data which is seen uh, is significantly reduced. We also have the BIM Cloud Connector. Uh, so this is a plugin that comes in uh, within the insert tab of ArcGIS desktop application where I can simply connect to the BIM 360 cloud uh, and pull in data, uh, whether they are the current Revit files, AutoCAD files directly from the BIM 360 cloud into ArcGIS Pro. So this really helps me in integrating a workflow where I might have uh, certain documents which uh, or certain drawings which are updated in the uh, native Autodesk applications uh, uh, uploaded uh, with different versions in the BIM 360 cloud and I can simply pull them in from uh, from the cloud platform into the desktop and environment and synchronize and work with them. So that really uh, lets me streamline the workflow that I have while working within the ArcGIS Pro desktop environment. Alternatively, I can also pull in any of uh, the GIS layers that I might have published onto my enterprise or online account uh, and pull them in using the Autodesk connector for ArcGIS uh, plugin that is natively available with all of the uh, Autodesk applications. Uh, so this is available within Revit, within Civil 3D, within InfraWorks, uh, as well as I can use uh, plugins uh, for bringing in data sets into AutoCAD. So that's really helping me bring in my GIS layers. Uh, I can always go ahead and use that as a base reference uh, for georeferencing, giving it the correct location and coordination, and then pull in that data set within ArcGIS Pro. So as you can see, while working with ArcGIS indoors, 
uh, the base reference that I have uh, for creating FloraWare plans and maps, uh, basically working with the two extensions that we have, that's ArcGIS Indoors uh, Maps and Spaces and ArcGIS uh, IPS, that's Indoor Positioning System, for any kind of real-time tracking that I want to do. Both of these are desktop-based applications that I have. I have to work with ArcGIS Pro uh, using these two applications to then go ahead, pull in my data in the database, use the database schema uh, and create flora web plans. Once I have created uh, whether it's my flora web plans data or my 3D navigational data, I can then go ahead and publish them as uh, web scenes, web maps, as well as routing services onto ArcGIS Enterprise and consume them with the, as different kinds of web, web applications, whether it's on online or enterprise. So whether I'm configuring uh, dashboards to uh, as, ascertain uh, the occupancy of ArcGIS indoors or uh, create a, a workflow again towards a certain asset management or maintenance within my indoor space uh, or configure a more of a form based survey using survey one to three. All of these workflows can be integrated onto the uh, indoor configurable apps. Uh, these are templates which are provided out of the box. Uh, within ArcGIS indoors, where I can ingest my web maps, my web scenes, uh, and configure uh, uh, applications onto the web, whether it's uh, to for uh, navigating to from a particular space or uh, ingesting it within a workflow for asset monitoring or asset management uh, at different uh, indoor spaces or at campus levels uh, for or uh, consuming them into different kinds of workflows. So this is a general overview that we have when I'm working with uh, ArcGIS indoors. So uh, right from how I need to ingest data into the application to then publishing it and then consuming that into different kinds of web based applications. I would like also like to talk to you a bit more about uh, the different divisions or categories that we have when I'm working with ArcGIS indoors. So uh, uh, with, with the indoors licensing, there are two major licensing components. That's ArcGIS indoors maps and ArcGIS indoors spaces. So ArcGIS indoors maps is majorly used for mapping where I need to pull in my uh, data set, make a FloraWare plan and uh, uh, assign those specific areas to specific assets, specific peoples, and then consuming it for creating a detailed indoor uh, navigation. So whether I want to navigate up the stairs or whether I want to na navigate up the elevator from a particular floor or even from a particular outdoor space in a campus like parking space to someone's office that's located inside. Uh, so to make sure that I have the base data ready, I would need ArcGIS indoors maps. ArcGIS Indoor Spaces is something that lets me work with or create uh, applications that are targeted more towards hot desks, reservation of certain uh, spaces, conference rooms, offices, uh, or even make sure that I have the correct uh, distancing uh, that is being followed, uh, or if I have a hybrid work environment in my workspace, uh, I can uh, use ArcGIS Indoor Spaces uh, and the templates that we have in ArcGIS Indoor Spaces for space-based planning. I can further use uh, these data sets that I have created using both ArcGIS Indoors Maps and ArcGIS Indoor Spaces and consume them within dashboard-based application to understand the occupancy, to understand which spaces or uh, desks or conference rooms have been reserved, um, and uh, even uh, understand the utilization and the percentage utilization of these spaces. 
The uh, complementary part of it is working with ArcGIS uh, positioning system. Um, where once I have my floor aware digital data ready, floor aware maps uh, and plans ready, I can then consume uh, or work with ArcGIS indoor positioning system uh, to install uh, and have the uh, the uh, real time uh, uh, tracking of any specific asset, any specific worker, uh, any specific person within an indoor positioning system. So that's uh, giving me the blue dot um, blue dot awareness uh, of a person navigating in an indoor space. So that's something that's an add on to working with ArcGIS indoors maps and spaces. Um, so before I uh, kind of move into the uh, demos uh, or um, the use cases that I have related to ArcGIS indoors, I would like to walk you through the licensing or the licensing modules that we have in ArcGIS indoors. So uh, whenever I'm working with ArcGIS indoors, I would require uh, working with ArcGIS desktop application, that's ArcGIS Pro, uh, along with the uh, 3D analyst and network analyst uh, extensions. So these are going to help me make sure I bring in my data plans, uh, I create floor aware plans, and then uh, I not just create them in 2D, but also create in 3D, where I make sure I have the correct elevation, uh, from the ground, uh, that's basically the height or the Z value from the ground for my indoor uh, navigation. So that's where I create the 3D based indoor navigation and route based systems. So uh, these are the two extensions that I would uh, require to be work working with when I'm working with ArcGIS indoors. Um, Whenever I'm working with the indoors extension within the desktop application, I can then go ahead and share them uh, as web scenes or web layers um, within uh, that can be consumed within any application that I have configured, whether it's on my mobile application or I have configured them on web. And then I'm consuming it within a kiosk or a web brace link based application that I have. I'll be showing you specific use cases about this later on, but I would like you to have kind of an overview about how the licensing works uh, uh, before. So you can relate this information to the use case when I'm talking to you uh, uh, through. Uh, so uh, if I am just having an indoors based application where I'm just viewing the applications, I can uh, view them as web browser based links or indoors applications on my mobile. Uh, I just need to log in and view them uh, at the organizational level if they have been shared at the organizational level. Uh, there is one part or a GIS professional who would be first configuring these applications so that my visitors or my stakeholders of the project can view that application. So the person who would be configuring it, the GIS professional, uh, the GIS analyst, uh, the licensing that would be required for them would be uh, to work with maps uh, so that they clear, create the floor aware plans or they use it for navigation and routing. Uh, indoor spaces is more of an application where I work with uh, creating hot desks, having a hybrid work environment, creating reservation of certain conference rooms, certain desk spaces within uh, my indoors floor plans. Uh, and if I have a workflow that is, uh, or if I'm a user uh, of ArcGIS um, indoors and I do not really want to create web-based applications uh, or I don't really have visitors, uh, I just want to create an ArcGIS indoors application um, that can be consumed in Pro just for my, uh, uh, just for uh, navigating and uh, having a desktop-based survey. We now also offer uh, indoors for ArcGIS Pro where I can just create floor aware plans within my desktop application. Uh, I do not need to have the licensing to be able to consume this uh, to uh, as uh, data within uh, ArcGIS indoors maps and configurable uh, web-based templates that I have. So I can just 
create my Flourover plans within the desktop application and then share the entire pro product package uh, with another user uh, as a pro based project uh, or a um, desktop based project, pro based project uh, that I can share that. So there are three different forms of uh, ways in which I can share my indoors maps and spaces as well as indoors for ArcGIS Pro uh, data sets that I consume um, and create. Uh, I would also need to have, uh, if I am working with web based ArcGIS uh, applications uh, where I'm creating, uh, I would need to have uh, a user type extension, a named user type extension uh, with a role of an editor and above. So that's kind of how it works with the licensing part of it within ArcGIS Indoors. Uh, before I jump into the web applications, I thought I would show you how uh, once I have consumed my uh, indoor space, uh, what you're seeing here is a mobile based application. Uh, this is a mobile handheld device and the blue dot here I'm seeing when I have the indoor positioning. Uh, these are more of small uh, hardwares that I need to install within my event or venue. Uh, and I need to configure it to make sure that I have the floor based awareness where I kind of uh, in real time being becoming aware of where how I'm navigating within an indoor space. Uh, so this is more of the blue dot uh, floor based awareness. The map that you are seeing here is the ArcGIS Indoors floor based plan uh, where I have different office spaces and different assets within those spaces uh, demarcated, navigated and then consumed within uh, the mobile application that you're seeing here. So this is how uh, I have the indoor positioning system. Uh, now let me walk you through uh, some of the use cases. Um, I'll start with ArcGIS desktop application, uh, how I consume, how the database schema looks like, and then how I publish it, and then uh, we'll be jumping onto the web-based applications. So uh, here I am, uh, I hope, uh, my screen is visible to uh, the desktop application ArcGIS Pro where I have consumed. Uh, let me show you how when I bring in any kind of uh, AutoCAD plans, so 2D plans, 3D plans, how ArcGIS uh, desktop application reads them. So if you're seeing here, I have a DWG AutoCAD data set with me here uh, where once I have um, brought in the data format here, I, uh, ArcGIS Pro uh, intuitively reads my AutoCAD data set as points, uh, so different annotation points, point data sets. Uh, if I have any 3D, it would be reading it as a multi-patch, uh, a polyline and a polygon. So I can simply drag and drop my uh, 2D plans here within my desktop application, uh, and that really helps me uh, read all of the data as an uh, as I have uh, read it. So basically, we have different layers within an auto CAD data set. So I would have polygons, polylines. They would be intuitively read as is within ArcGIS Pro. When we talk about uh, when we are talking about ArcGIS indoors, we have a different dedicated uh, data schema while reading it. So when I'm talking about the data schema, it is usually the units, levels, facilities, as well as the details. Uh, I need to create an indoors database which has the indoors data schema along with the indoors network when I'm working within ArcGIS Pro. Right. Uh, I have to run the tools which are here available within the indoors uh, tool set, uh, which can also let me bring in a BIM model, directly a BIM model, as well as a 2D plan uh, within ArcGIS Pro. So uh, what you're seeing here is a 2D data set brought in. Uh, I have brought it in to and consumed it within the schema and configured it to be floor aware. So when I'm talking about floor awares, I have uh, a uh, level, uh, an institutional level uh, awareness. So if I have multiple buildings within a campus or an institution, I can have or to toggle between different buildings. So we have just here one building, so it's just one uh, specific building that I can see here. And I can also have it at different levels. 
So if I'm toggling on to level one, you can see here that my layout has changed. It's giving me uh, an awareness of where the entrance lobby is, where the uh, desks are spaced, where the office conference uh, rooms are there, specific dedicated offices are stored. Um, I can have this kind of floor aware plan created. I can toggle to different floors. So on level three, the um, floor plan automatically changes. Uh, I can see on level two as well as level four. So as the floor plan uh, or the floor schema changes, um, the floor aware plans uh, would reflect for that specific floor. Um, I can even similarly configure the entire work within the 3D space and make sure that I toggle to different floors. So this you can see here is floor one. I can toggle it to floor two. And similarly, I can toggle it to floor three and so on and so forth. So as you can see here, it's just reflecting floor two and uh, the rest of the floors have been hidden from my view. I can go in my 3D space and have like a better detailing. So I have my desks, I have my chairs, uh, I have the different uh, conference rooms. I can label these rooms. Um, I can uh, work with the different uh, staircase as well as the elevator settings. So all of this is defined within the schema that I have. And I can toggle to different uh, floors um, to reflect the specific floor and the level that I have, right? Um, so this is where I'm working with Z or, or the 3D or the Z um, awareness that I have within my data set. So not just working with uh, 2D data sets, but also with 3D data sets. Then I can go ahead and uh, work within uh, the analysis tab, uh, the network data set, to figure out uh, the routing between different floors, right? So if I have uh, a desk located on uh, level one uh, that I need to navigate to, so uh, this workflow again comes back uh, into picture when I'm working with a specific uh, floor aware uh, or an asset management workflow. So I have certain assets, whether they are electrical assets, mechanical assets, my mechanical vents uh, within an indoor uh, space, um, uh, certain plugs, lights that I have within conference rooms, desk spaces. I can have uh, digital forms to um, uh, uh, denote that a certain asset, whether it's an electrical plug, uh, whether it's a light switch, uh, whether it's a electrical bulb uh, within a conference room or desk space that's not working or requires maintenance, I tag that. And then I have a workflow where the maintenance crew uh, then has to figure out the high priority assets, um, uh, filter them out and then maintain them. So here, this is a very small example at just one uh, specific campus level where I'm going from one desk space uh, up the staircase um, to different floors uh, to directly or a, a conference room that's located on the fourth level here, right? So this is a very uh, kind of a small use case, but you can expand on this use case uh, as the complexity of your problem increases. Uh, so here I'm working with all of the multiple floors, uh, having a workflow for uh, indoor navigation uh, where when I have multiple such routes uh, along with different priorities, uh, I can define how I want to sh go ahead and share this uh, level of indoor uh, floor aware navigation. Uh, when I was talking about consuming this data, so this is the base data that I'm talking about, uh, whether it's in 2D maps or 3D maps, uh, I then go ahead and share it uh, as web scenes. So if, I, if it's a 3D data set, it would be shared as a web scene. If it's a map, it would be shared as a 2D web map. I go ahead and I share this onto my ArcGIS um, online or ArcGIS Enterprise account. So I share the routing uh, as well as I share the Floraware data sets um, 
onto ArcGIS Online. And let me toggle here. Yes. Uh, so let me just quickly sign into my uh, ArcGIS Online account here. Sorry about this delay. Yes. Uh, so I, I would be publishing this data onto my ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise account. When I have uh, published this data, let me till then, yeah, refresh the rest of the tabs. Yeah, uh, I would be consuming this within a browser-based application. So the beauty of this is this is the data that I have uh, published onto my ArcGIS Online account, which I am consuming into a web browser-based application. So this is where I see the FloraWare plans. So uh, the Explorer tab, where I uh, have the similar uh, capability that I had in the desktop application of toggling to all of the different floors and the floor plan changes as I toggle from floor one uh, to floor two to floor three, so on and so forth. I can zoom uh, to the floor plan or uh, zoom to a particular space within the floor plan. I can even search for different spaces. Uh, so if it's a flexible space um, um, in a corporate office, uh, the desks can be hybrid uh, or flexible, so they are not really assigned. Uh, but sometimes offices and conference rooms are, so I can have that level of um, uh, tagging already done in my Floribert plans. So I can even search for different uh, spaces. So I can search for a conference room here. So I have uh, all of the different units uh, drop coming here in the drop down section. I can search for conference room five. And what it uh, intuitively does is it gives me the details of the conference room five. So telling me which unit it is within the campus, it would navigate to that specific unit. And not just that, it would also navigate to that specific level and show me or highlight me where my conference uh, room is. Let's search for another conference room, maybe conference room one. Right, so as you can see here, it automatically toggled to the first level, highlighting where the conference room is, as well as gave me all of the specific uh, directions. If I have published this data onto as a mobile pa map package, I can even consume it within the native uh, ArcGIS indoors mobile applications. And then I can have this not just as a browser link, but also within my mobile handheld device. Uh, the uh, the configurable template that you're seeing here for the mobile can also generate directions. So I'm trying to navigate from conference room one uh, to maybe a unit or a desk space. Um, let's search for uh, desk space 66, right? So uh, what it would do uh, is it would let me navigate. Uh, so let me just quickly refresh this. Uh, it would search for directions and let me navigate uh, to uh, from one space uh, to another. Right. Uh, let's quickly go back and search. For the conference, conference one, get the directions. Yeah, to maybe a unit. And unit 14, and it would generate. Uh, I can even search for um, another unit, maybe like 55, right? And it would generate the directions. So it's letting me know that conference room one is on floor one. And clearly, I have to go up the staircases to level two because unit 55 or desk 55 here is on uh, level two. Uh, so here I have this. Uh, what I have is not just the directions, but also the distance that I would be covering along with how, an approximation of how much time it would take me to reach from one space to another. So when you have multiple buildings and multiple uh, assets that need to be maintained on uh, at different priority levels, I can have this uh, uh, even more generated, even more in depth. 
Similarly, it lets me uh, work or the indoors schema lets me work with not just uh, digging up the staircases, which is the walking, but also having the, uh, the directions generated for wheelchairs. So that's where if I have a wheelchair uh, generated, what it would do is it would uh, navigate me through the elevators. So that's what it takes into account. It also takes into account any specific lag which is seen when I'm navigating from elevators. So generally when you have um, uh, when you have office spaces uh, which has uh, a lot of crowd which comes in during the peak office or travel hours between uh, say 8 o'clock to like 10 o'clock when uh, the officers really are picking up and people are traveling and coming in. There's some lag that's seen in the elevator transports. I can uh, uh, generate or take that also in the factor. Similarly, now let's look at how I can consume this within the 3D space. So I'm not just looking at, uh, at it from a 2D space, but I'm also looking at my entire navigation from a 3D space. Uh, so let me just quickly um, kind of show you from this view how uh, the 3D space is looking at. Um, also uh, giving you an overview of all of the floors as we did in the desktop application. I have a toggled view of um, all of the floors, uh, all of the spaces. Um, the desk spaces, the um, the staircase, all of this generated here. Uh, so this is giving me a quick three dimensional view. I can toggle to different spaces. So level two, level three here, um, level four, and also generate directions, right? So conference, maybe uh, conference room six um, to conference room five. So it's uh, it's showing me that my conference room was located on level four here uh, through the back entrance, which is the sh um, the back staircase, which is the shortest path uh, to unit 55, which is located on level three here, right? Uh, so I have a similar, uh, sorry, not level three, but rather level two. So basically I have the similar uh, capabilities of not just creating floor aware plans in 2D and 3D, but also generating the indoor routing and the quickest path uh, to multiple places that I need to go to. I can add different stops. So maybe unit 11 and the route would then be generated for me, right? So not just a, a, a quick way in which I can navigate, but also share. Uh, and the beauty of this is I can then go ahead and share this uh, just as a quick link um, to anybody who is visiting my space. Uh, so all they need to do is log in into the application and then generate their own directions. So if there is a new visitor that's coming to the space that I have, um, I can go ahead and uh, just share this browser link. They can sh uh, search for a particular person, um, maybe a specific desk, um, the auditorium, the cafeteria that I have within my campus and then navigate from their current location to uh, the par parking space to uh, how do I uh, route or reroute to the cafeteria. And this can be shared as a web link. I can even within the directions. So when I was searching for a particular uh, room or a conference room within the directions that I have, I can share these. Um, I can go ahead and share this as directions, uh, web links. I can share it, send it via an email, uh, send it to a clipboard, um, save that specific space as important um, or go ahead and just um, share, um, uh, share, share them as links uh, with the person who would be visiting that office. Uh, the application also lets me look or search for uh, spaces that I have uh, saved or even uh, for the recent spaces that I have searched, right? Um, I can even go ahead and explore here. So again, kind of uh, when I have multiple spaces or multiple levels within the or multiple buildings within one campus property, or even if I'm navigating from the parking to the uh, campus uh, 
of to a particular floor on the campus, I can go ahead and explore the areas. Uh, if I have certain assets like outdoor cafeteria spaces, uh, outdoor auditoriums, amphitheaters, I can go ahead and mark those within my spaces. If I have events within those spaces, again, I can go ahead and tag those spaces. So then those events become become highlighted and a new visitor who's visiting the campus say simply can go to my spaces and quickly search for the directions for, for that space. Uh, so this was uh, what I kind of wanted to show from uh, like how you would look at a specific uh, indoors from more of uh, indoor navigation space finding from a uh, corporate space, but I can even incorporate uh, something as uh, complex as uh, a water treatment facility where I don't really um, uh, where I don't really have a lot of access, but the people who are accessing the workers um, or even inspectors uh, might not really know the lay of the land where the layout is a bit more complex than what you would normally have uh, than a simple uh, uh, corporate space. Um, which is once you kind of have an idea about the uh, in space, you kind of get an uh, understanding or your brain immediately marks. But uh, something like a water treatment facility where you have uh, such a complex uh, uh, number of assets on the floor um, where it's kind of difficult to have an idea about all of the different assets. Um, along with all of the different spaces and there might be restricted spaces where you can't cross or you can't go uh, or uh, some spaces where you need to have alerts about those specific spaces generated. So what you are seeing here within my desktop application is a water treatment facility, the BIM model of a water treatment facility we have bought into ArcGIS indoors. Uh, we've also made sure uh, to kind of uh, bring in the schema so what you, when I click on a specific asset you can see the mechanical equipment category so this is again all of the fa uh, family ID the attributes which are read directly from a Revit file so you can see the elevation the distance uh, the hazard system all of this uh, all of the specific details about that water treatment facility so I can have different assets all of those tagged and all of that backend information brought in within ArcGIS indoors. Uh, what uh, I can also do here is bring in my utility network. So I can run traces, I can uh, run um, upward trace, downward trace for a specific asset as I'm tagging it um, and making sure I get to know which specific asset is linked with which uh, other related assets, uh, which is the upstream flow, what are the connections for a specific asset. I can uh, run them, validate them, basically uh, have the utility network also configured within uh, the ArcGIS Pro desktop application. So once I have all of this integrated information or base information created. I similarly go ahead and then share this and I uh, can share this uh, within uh, desktop or uh, web based applications that I have from the desktop application that I have created the information in. So you here I have a pretty complex uh, water distribution system uh, here where I have different assets from the field, so different demarcated areas. Uh, this is more of a utility network that I have. Um, if I have them configured, uh, that's awesome. I can read this uh, and uh, what I do have here is the uh, uh, the water treatment facility uh, for which I have just an a view of the utility network outside, but I don't really have the knowledge of what's happening inside the um, inside my water treatment facility. So that's where indoors comes into picture, where I have the FloraWare 2D plan created, um, where which it's giving me information on a specific first floor, what I have, or what are the different valve assets um, uh, that I have. Uh, how is the floor plan looking like as well as uh, what is the different uh, what are the different assets 
on the second floor where are the offices, where are the break rooms, all of this can be configured within the indoor space. Uh, again, if I'm searching for a specific wolf, uh, I am an inspector, right? I am new to this facility. I don't really know the lay of the land, uh, so I can search for a specific assets, uh, specific assets, so an isolation wolf, right? Um, it would toggle to that specific highlight, that specific asset gives me uh, the information that I have in the back end and even I can even search for directions, right? So from uh, maybe a particular office or uh, let's search okay. yeah, um, from a particular office. Uh, what is kind of the walking distance? So again, uh, indoor distance, direction, time. Um, how I would have to go up, uh, basically go up uh, down the staircase from the office space. So that's located on floor two um, to the isolation wall on floor one. And then I can have all of this visualized in 3D. So I can have all the market zones which I cannot cross and uh, the indoor uh, routing would make sure that I'm not really crossing the areas um, that are not really accessible on foot. So it's asking me to go from the office space down the staircase, um, back the uh, the just enough space that I, one man has uh, across uh, the asset and then locate the isolation valve. So this is really um, how I can have or work with indoors for a really complex um, 3D facility that I might have. And again, I can bring my um, uh, basically the 3D um, data set with information um, and then configure it for indoors application. Right? Uh, so not just working with um uh working with corporate spaces but also working with somewhere with which has um uh, with water treatment facilities or even uh different industrial areas which have a lot of different assets which uh with a lot of different connectivities or which might have certain restricted spaces that you cannot have people go uh, even for inspections so how would they navigate these complex areas so that's where actually indoors comes into picture where you have all of that data set and then the indoor visualization of uh, um, all of the different uh, data that you're consuming from the desktop application. Uh, so that was it for uh, our session today from my side. Uh, I would be handing over the uh, session back to Vivek 